Describe a field watch with the vibe of a vintage pilot watch, which exudes a unique air of nostalgia and adventure. I would say a aesthetic versatility. A timepiece that looks good on or off the field, yet some areas like durability, legibility, practicality and functionality cannot be compromised. With the NIW watch, we get all of the above by way of a fully stainless steel case, a flat slab of sapphire crystal that is positioned a notch below the bezel for protection in challenging environments, a robust case diameter of 36 mm and a slimline presence with just 10.5 mm case height, bright and long-lasting luminosity from the application of premium C3 loom over the printed indices. A 6.2 mm crown at 4 o'clock looks almost oversized on this stunning thin case. The screw and crown and screw down case back support the practicality and durability factors. And the heart of the watch, the movement, is a sweeping second Seiko VH31 quartz movement. If all of the aforementioned did not convince you that this is a value watch, the $30 price tag will. $30, that's it. And you're getting stainless steel and you're getting sapphire crystal, a screw down case back as well as a screw and crown. Insane value. Anyways, $30, I've left the link in the description below the video. Check it out if you're after a sharp price. And now let's get into this review because I really do like this watch. I feel there's a bit of a connection that I want to talk about in this review. Let's do it. With regards to the dimensions, we get a diameter of 36 millimeters, a lug to lug length of 44 and a half millimeters, a height of just 10.5 millimeters, a lug width of 20 millimeters, and a weight of 65 grams. The vintage air of this watch is striking. The rugged practicality oozes nostalgic class, but also carries an aura of romance and heroism from the World War II era. The watch caught my attention because I have a soft spot for vintage inspired pilot field watches. And a vintage pilot watch is essentially a timeless testament to the courage of all pilots in those earlier days of aviation. I feel like the vintage pilot watches are that tangible link to the past, a reminder of the timeless virtues of courage and selflessness that define true heroes. I was thinking about this, why am I so fond of vintage inspired pilot watches? Well, it could be the fact that my granddad was actually a pilot in the World War II era, and there is something about these watches that are so reminiscent, they are nostalgic in some way, and they feel so real, so humble. Anyways, let's keep going with this review. Looking at the profile, we have a flat and equal height flank, stretching from lug to lug. A downward slant is very aggressive. In fact, it looks more of a curl down rather than a slant of the lugs. The flank is polished, just like the rest of the case really. The lugs are quite long here. You may have noticed the proportionality is slightly off. Well, that's the way it seems, considering a diameter of 36 millimeters and a lug to lug length of 44 millimeters. But that is actually due to the fixed lugs that we have here. And that is another nod to the vintage styling. The nylon strap we get as standard is very suitable for this watch. Since there are several dial colors available, the strap matches the dial tonality. In our case, the olive green dial and strap are in line. The keepers as well as the clasp are milled and bead blasted. That finish may contrast the polished case, yet when on the wrist, this detail goes unnoticed. The strap quality is reasonable, not stretchy, yet flexible and thick enough to feel durable. The lug width of 20 millimeters on a 36 millimeter case keeps the watch very snug on top of the wrist. The fixed bezel appears more like a frame for the recessed sapphire crystal. The bezel is tall and actually looks like it's hugged by the lugs and flanks. On the right hand side, the guarded screw and crown is at 4 o'clock. The 6.2 mm diameter of the crown looks significant and meaty. It sits snugly between the guards, hardly any empty spaces left. Let's flip the watch over to find an unmarked stainless steel slab of screw down case back. The emphasis of this watch and everything about it is utility and function, and it just works. We don't get any anti-reflective coating, but that does not affect legibility. The rehope pipes down to the dial, a matte 
olive green dial provides great contrasting background to the white and yellow elements. The mini track is white and is read up on the perimeter, with yellow markings at 5 minute intervals. The hour numerals are printed in white at every hour except for 12 where we get a yellow triangle pointing north. The chrome edge hands get yellow loom inserts, the sweeping seconds pointer is thin and chromed. As for the movement, we have Seiko VH31, which allows for a sweeping motion of the seconds hand, somewhat resembling the sweep of an automatic movement. If the NH35 with 21,600 beats per hour provides 6 pulses per second, the VH31 quartz movement pushes out 4 pulses per second, so almost as smooth or fluid as the automatic. The loom test surprises with the brightness and longevity of printed elements and the hands. And then we remember that NIW offers C3 loom, which is considered to be 15% brighter than BGW9. Considering we have a case diameter of just 36 millimeters, you would think it looks small on the wrist, but no, because of those elongated yet curved down lugs, we do have this larger feeling or a larger looking wear of the watch on your wrist. And that is just right, so it's not too small at all. So if we take a look at my six and a half inch wrist and how this watch sits on top of it, it looks just right. There is no overhangs and yet it's not too small at all. So once again, for 30 bucks, we are getting a lot of value. There are a lot of premium materials here. The way it's put together, that's what matters. So there is that vintage styling, that nice nostalgic air to this watch. This is definitely an interesting watch. Personally, for 30 bucks, I doubt we'll be able to pick up anything with these materials and of course, this look. Anyways, $30, I've left the link in the description below the video. Check it out if you're after a sharp price. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.